All right, so uh, number seven on our review for the exam. Um, looking for the limit as x approaches six. Unfortunately, if I plug that in, I get a zero on the bottom. So uh, direct substitution is not going to work, but I can try uh, factoring this. So we'll say this is going to be the limit as x approaches six of x minus four times x minus six all over three times x minus six. And then you can see that these x minus six values would just cancel out. substitution and plug that 6 into the in for the x. So I'd have 6 minus 4 over 3 is 2 thirds. Next up I've got the limit as x approaches 7 of 1 over x minus 7. So one method I could use for this would be a, a graphical solution versus a, a table or something. But if you get out your graphing calculator and you were to graph this, you'd see that at 7, there's going to be an asymptote. And that as you approach 7 from the left, your graph is going to tail off low. And as you approach from the right, it's going to tail off high. So. I've got the limit as x approaches 7 from the left is going to be negative infinity. And the limit as x approaches 7 from the right is going to be positive infinity. And since negative infinity is not equal to positive infinity, we'd say this limit does not exist. As far as the final exam, it's a multiple choice test. You'll be able to tell it doesn't exist pretty quick just looking at the calculator. But I just I do want to make a point that the reason it doesn't exist is not because the denominator is zero. It's because the limits approach different values from either side. If we take a look at this last problem right here, we got a denominator of zero as well. But we still ended up with a limit, two thirds. This case, denominator is zero. Take a look at the graph. It approached different values. This one doesn't exist. So it, it's not just the fact that the, that the denominator is zero that makes these limits not exist. Uh, next one, we're supposed to use the limit definition of a derivative here. So I'm going to use some color. I'm going to rewrite f of x in blue. And then I want to look at um, f of x plus h. So if I want to simplify this a little bit more, this is going to be uh, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared is just, uh, you know, this piece is here. And then plus 6x plus 6h is corresponding to this part here, with that 6 just distributed to both the x and the h. Um, so now, if you recall, the limit definition of a derivative says that it's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so I just plug in my green f of x plus h and my blue f of x into the green and blue spots on here. And uh, I'll have the limit as h approaches 0 of this one here, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 6x plus 6h minus f of x, which was uh, x 
squared plus 6x. And we've got this whole thing over h. Now, since we've already learned the shortcuts for this thing, um, the, salute, the choices, the answer choices on the test are going to be in this format. So, obviously, you can look at this problem from the beginning and say, well then, f prime of x is going to be 2x plus 6. But the, there's not going to be an answer choice that says 2x plus 6. It's going to be more like in, in this format here. And they're going to say, which one of these answer choices you know, will give you the, the derivative if you were to finish it. So you've got to make sure you can get to this stage here. From here, it's pretty simple. If you were to finish this problem, you'd see that these x squared values would cancel out. The 6 axis would cancel out. Every term that's left would have an h in it, right? h, h, h. Those would all cancel out with the 1 h on the bottom. And you would then take the limit as this h goes to 0 to end up with 2x plus 6. So for the tangent line, this time you can go ahead and use your derivative rules. So, first thing I would do, slope, of course, is f prime of x, which is 4x minus 4. In this case, evaluate it at x equals 1, because I've got that x equals 1 right there. So, uh, this is going to be f prime of means I'll have 4 times 1 minus 4 gives me a slope of 0. Find the derivative, plug in the x value. Pretty straightforward. You got this graph which looks uh, kind of like this. And essentially all I'm checking that you know is that if I take, um, say I take three points on here, I want you to know about the derivatives at this point. So, so here, this is corresponding to a tangent line like this, right? So this slope is negative. This slope is less than zero. So for this one, we could say that f prime of x is less than zero. Over here, at the green one, That's going to be corresponding to the slope of a, of a tangent that's positive. Let's see if I can draw this a little bit better. One needs to be calibrated. Um, so here, this slope is greater than zero. So for this one, we could say f prime of x is positive or greater than zero. And then any point like this, like this blue one, this slope is zero. So for this one, we could say that f prime of x is 0. But you're going to be looking for answers like these. This is what the answer choices are going to look like on the exam. Is that various places on the graph, you're going to be trying to determine if the slope is positive, negative, or 0. Um, next up, we just have a, a straightforward power rule. So remember that your, um, the value of the exponent is going to come to the front and you subtract 1. So this is going to be 14x to the first power plus 7. 1 is a 0, right? The derivative of a constant is 0. And then when this 3 comes to the front, I'm going to get plus 3x to the negative 4 power. This negative 4 here is coming from negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. There's a rule that says that
we've got one of our derivative rules says that the derivative of any constant is zero. Well, right here, I'm looking at the derivative of 3e. Well, 3e is a constant. So the answer to this would just be zero. Um, it's made to look a little tricky, but it's nothing more than finding the derivative of a constant. It's, it won't be like this necessarily on your test. I just want you to see that the derivative of a constant.